doing and that traders are telling me they're putting on is selling the euro and buying the gold ETF. So they're selling the FXE and they're buying the GLD and the IAU. We're seeing that. We saw that overnight uh, as you know, European trading was going on, and we're seeing it continue here after the close at the NYMEX. Meanwhile, in oil prices, they're below $78 a barrel, and we are seeing prices move below the 200-day moving average. Again, a lot of the selling that we're seeing here is technical selling. We're watching what's happening to the euro. They're watching what's happening uh, to stocks as well, and they're selling oil and other commodities. Gold is holding up well, of course, as the safe haven play, as the alternative currency, but oil is coming off sharply. And the next level to watch here for oil prices uh, could be somewhere near $75 a barrel. Sharon, thank you very much. And as she mentions uh, what we're seeing in commodities oil, but let's bring in Addison Armstrong here uh, to get your sense. Addison, what's your take on, on what we are seeing in the energy markets, and in particular, the big sell-off we've seen in crude over the past couple of days? Well, it's very interesting. We were talking about it earlier on the desk here. Uh, what we've seen over the past three days this week before today hasn't really changed that much, which means, in effect, that the bulls have been trying to hold on to their position very strongly all week. It'll be interesting tomorrow to see what happens to open interest, but I suspect that what we're seeing is that the bulls have finally given up and have realized that they can't hold on and the fundamentals and everything that's going on in group has finally got them out of the market. But, but Addison, here's my, my, my question as we try to take a step back. I mean, we're looking at a loss that sort of, I think it's fair to use the word now, panic territory that we had seen uh, back when we saw this happen here in the U.S. But yet, if I take a step back, I think about the China story, which is ostensibly what's been driving crude prices, and there shouldn't be any change in that because of what we're seeing on our screen right now. Well, Should there be? I, I, I think I beg to differ a little bit there, Aaron. I think that, first of all, we have seen China move at the government level to try and slow down to their economy. Uh, the other thing that I've got to tell you is that this slowdown in Europe that's going to happen in the wake of what's going on in Greece, it's inevitable, is going to impact what's happening in China. Who are they going to export their goods to? And the U.S. isn't really that strong on, on its feet right now either. So China's export markets aren't there. They're already slowing down. They're taking away stimulus. And I think that's also weighing down on oil prices. All right, Addison, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, Jim Kramer is here on set now. Jim, I mean, it does get to this, this, I guess, this fundamental question, if you take a step back, which is, uh, is there something wrong with all of Europe? Did they not write down those debts enough? Do they have a broader problem with their economy? Or is this just an over-extrapolation from one small no, country? No. Which is it? I think we said last night on the show, it, people from home can't play this. This is a very sophisticated hedge fund game. Yep. And you just kind of, I don't want to say turn it off, because obviously you want to watch it, It's a, but it's become a spectator sport. You really can't, most of the, uh, the retail investors watch my show, you really can't play it. But their confident get confidence, as you know, we've been talking all day about these stronger than expected readings in various consumer confidence surveys. Right. Well, they're, they're really meaningless, because it's a hedge fund game, and until, but, it's, you have to break the, you have to bring back the drachma, or Tr Trish has to come out and say the right. euro's broken. Until then, each uh, hedge, hedge funds are just going to try to break Italy, and they'll try to break Spain. Right. There is no resolution yeah. until these countries funds, are broken. It yeah. may be hedge funds playing, but the problem is everyone else is watching, and they're seeing these big negative Thanks, numbers, and their confidence gets affected, and then maybe their Thanks, spending gets affected, and it does actually become something that oh, feeds it is. through. I mean, what, how do oh, we no, gauge I'm, the risk uh, of no, that? It, That's it's, all. Yeah. Look, it, it's, it's, I, I would, look, I, mm -hmm. if it were... If I felt it was an opportunity, I would say, look, other than rotational names like a Pepsi or a Dr. Pepper, just, uh, you know, just go start picking here. Mm -hmm. I felt that there was levels to pick that was wrong. It was too early. I've been saying, listen, if you look at really quality industrials, maybe dip your toe in the water. It's obviously not working, so you got to pull back. I do believe that there mm -hmm. is good, that this is not the right time in terms of our previous guest was saying, listen, nobody is in strong enough shape other than the Chinese to take this, and the Chinese will now mm -hmm. have to, they don't even know, the government doesn't have to worry about slowing itself, its own country down, the right. rest of the world will slow it down. So it's just not a great level, it's not an interesting level okay. to pick, it's just not a good level to he, get involved. Here's my, um, here's my other question, you know, which, and it comes back to the point Steve raised right. and, and everyone was starting to weigh in on, which is either is the market not paid attention or are they disregarding out of uh, a lack of credibility at the European Central Bank, the comments that Trichet made, I think which it's the is, latter. 
So you think it, so now that almost Look, is more serious. Seen. If you don't have, have confidence or credibility for the European Central Bank, that is a, a much bigger problem. We need a default. Problem. I mean, everybody knows that. The banks, you know, everybody's going to, all the money, the, the trillions of dollars of hot money is going to keep pressing until they get a default. Mm -hmm. Once we get a default, then you, the euro will stabilize and it'll be interesting again. When I say interesting, meaning that when you buy a stock, you won't yep. get the report and discover you're down $2 from where you bought it, which is what's happening right Rick now. Rick Santelli? Yeah, the euro versus the dollar just cracked under 126. I'm sure we're hitting sell stops. We're hitting we knockouts are. in the over-the-counter market. They're all, of course, watching the euro versus the yen as well. Same picture from a slightly different perspective. And, of course, you can see as the euro and the equities, they are ping-ponging back off each other. And Jim Cramer is spot on. If you are a retail investor, don't touch the TV, but also don't touch your telephone and call your broker. He's and not a good thing. To do. Well, Thank Jim, you, Rick. Rick Jim, look right. where, but look at where we are. See, this is this is my question. But interesting level. It's not a level. But you're where down. I feel. We have not seen a day like this, and I don't have the exact date. Right. But the, it, clearly, what you're seeing now is since what last uh, March when we hit the market right. lows, or the fall of uh, of 2008. You're down 560 points. Oh. People are seeing this, and those memories of fear are coming back, right. and that's what can become self fulfilling. That, that, I think that's true. Look, I'm sure, I mean, I, I was looking at some, I know this sounds boring, but some master limited partnerships that are selling Jim, I'm seven, sorry to seven, interrupt. Seven, eight. They're Na interesting. Matt Nesto has uh, some breaking news. Matt? We have so many statistics here as this market unravels. Uh, Peter Schack, now sitting next to me, just pointed out that the benchmarks have all lost their gains on a year-to-date basis. This 500-plus uh, point for we uh, loss that we've seen for the Dow uh, is the biggest day, the biggest one-day loss that we've seen uh, since uh, December 1st of 2008. These statistics, as the market weakens up even more, uh, will probably become outdated. We'll have to refresh them. Right before my eyes, Aaron, I just saw, I mentioned earlier that the 50-day average got taken taken out yesterday in the S&P. We just took out the 100. We have just taken out the 200-day moving average uh, in the S&P 500, uh, which is a very, very substantial and significant breakdown of technical okay, support. Okay, where, where are we? Market, we're going to get it's Watner a up. Fast a, market. It's a very fast market. That's very well, clear. I, mean, like, I want to know, where do we start hitting curves? I mean, you're now dropping uh, right. three or 400 points here in the past few minutes. Well, I mean, like when I came down, it was not an interesting level. Suddenly, mm -hmm. it's down 300 more from when I sat down. You're getting a little more interesting. The last time the market was down 750 points. That would have been Aaron, you know, obviously, Aaron, if I can, if I can just say something here, Aaron. There? I'm not, yeah. Uh, we've also just uh, looked on the website of the New York Stock Exchange. Circuit breakers don't kick in after 2.30. Just to right. FYI, I throw that out there. That is a fair point. Scott, you're there. What, what, is, what is the talk? What happens from here? And what are people saying? Now you're down 800. Yeah, I just went through the December. Yeah, Aaron, and they're saying, when I asked them what the heck is going on down here, uh, I don't know. There is fear. This is capitulation, really. I mean, it is classic capitulation. There is fear in this market. You can take a look at what has happened with the VIX absolutely exploding today. You have seen a flight to safety within gold, a flight to quality no, within treasury, it's a, flight, a flight out of equities from almost every single major sector. We have seen it accelerate throughout the day, and that's why right now we're sitting down 875 points, Aaron. All right, we've now we've now broken uh, Dow 10,000. You can we're down nearly 900. Start, I mean, you know, it was 400 you... points ago. I, I was 500 points ago when I sat down. It wasn't of interest. Kind you of know, of interest here. Kind of a little yeah. bit of Michelle yeah. Cabrera. Kind of there, yeah. there, yeah. there was a moment today. Mohammed Al Aaron was on Power Lunch today, right. and and here's the one thing that he said that kind of got us all hey, Rich, very Caroline. uneasy is when he said we've been talking to banks in Europe, and here? now remember back during Lehman when people didn't want right. to lend to each other because of Lehman. Now it's that's what's happening right, to European right. banks. So overnight rates are starting to climb. They're starting to get nervous. And you're seeing right. fragility in the credit system right. there. And there's concern that we get fragility in the credit right. system so here. Mean, we're not in the right. same position. We got a lot more capital in the banks than we right. did before. But we're also much higher. I mean, if a Lehman, if a Lehman I, I don't want to mention okay. any particular European banks, but if a, when Lehman collapsed, it wasn't a buying opportunity until the next day. You know, I mean, you okay. can't really just go in. We are going to pull up a yeah, chart as soon as we can. Right. Here, here's a chart I want to pull up because what we're seeing right now, I mean, it, it, maybe, I, I believe maybe unprecedented. You're down, talk about capitulation. Let's take a look at P&G. All right, this is going to say everything. P&G is now down 25%. Oh, well, if that's true. If okay. that stock is there, you just go but and buy it. That can't ago, be there. A few that is not a real ago, price. That stock was down oh, well, 2%. just go buy Procter. All right, this is an unprecedented thing. Just go buy thing Procter and Gamble. They're poor so, a decent well, then, quarter. Yeah, just is go there buy a hedge it. fund that is liquidating? Is there uh, a distressed seller? Is there something else 
just I'll happened. Pay, a Forty-nine right. and a quarter bid for fifty thousand Proctor if I were at my hedge fund. I mean, this, I is, mean, that, yeah, this is a good opportunity. They were just taking that point. I mean, that's an incredible. I mean, that name. When nothing I walked out, it was a sixty-one. Nothing. In the past well, see, four minutes. When nothing. I, when I walked out, it was a sixty-one. I'm not that interested in it. It's a forty-seven. Well, that's a different security entirely. So what you have to do, though, you have to use limit orders because Proctor just jumped seven points. That I said I liked it at forty-nine. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you got to be careful. This when, when Rick Santelli was saying, look, you know, this is dangerous market. What I am saying is, you put in a forty-nine bid for two hundred shares of Proctor. If you get hit, right. fine. 